what's up everybody uh welcome back to the team pause channel uh today we're going to be going over a guide for meow scarda uh basically i've been i've been meaning to go ahead and drop this one for a minute now uh the cat is is where it's at man i ain't gonna lie to you uh but when we do these reviews uh we make sure we go over uh topics for the basic concepts of the temporal forces deck how it works how it differs from all the other ones right and then we start to discuss like the strategy uh, that you should utilize when using the Pokemon's abilities or manipulating like the game and such things like that. So um, let's go over Meow Scarta EX. So some of the key cards and combos, you know what I'm saying? Something that would make this the highlight powerful combination. Uh, basically, it's going to be between Meow Scarta's uh, Bokeh Magic. Let's you put three damage counters on one of the opponent's bitch Pokemon. And then you pairing that with the Radiant Alakazam's Painful Spoons. So basically, can't use the full uh, swing of Scratching Nails unless uh, you already have some type of damage counter on the Pokemon that you need to swing at. So... This would be a 220, but for the most part, uh, you're going to be attaching the double turbo energy to it anyway. So it's going to be a 200 swing, unless you're swinging at Charizard, you know, then it gives you the automatic foe and you knock the Charizard out. Because that's what everybody's playing against anyway, right? Uh, basically, you're running the PGI engine. So this, if we go in order uh, for deck building tips and strategies... Uh, you pretty much want to get the Pidgeot out first, right? You want to get the Pidgeot out first. And then worry about Meow Scarta. And then worry about Alakazam. Because once you have this, you can search for any of this that you need. So if you need Rare Candies, you need Meow Scarta, you need Alakazam. Maybe you need Manaphy, something might be attacking the bench. You don't want to get uh, the Spriggies and shot up, right? You don't really have to worry too much about like Greninja's like attacking the bench for the most part. Um, everything should be pretty safe like the Beeper will draw. I mean you got a Mana Fee. This will be 280. You know what I'm saying? Unless you just got like way too many Spriggies just like sitting on the bench. That may be like the only real issue you might run into. But other than that, I mean, other than that man, it's pretty pretty straightforward you know what i'm saying get the pgi out first then worry about the meal scardas then worry about the alakazams probably in that order um some of the things that's pretty good it would be the cleffa always love cleffa no matter what deck it is cleffa is always just so good to me dude because like just having this ability to draw into one prizer it's it's basically like a free retreat uh, done sparse. Like having this in the deck is just it's just useful, right? Especially when I don't have the Pidgeot set up yet or the Bibro set up yet. You know, this is like if I had to start with something, it'd be this over like maybe the Spriggy or the Pidgey. These need to be on the bench for the most part and just let this do his work. Like let this do his job, right? Um, other than that. Basically, what you're trying to do is time the TM Devos. Um, when you start getting the matchup analysis and sideboarding and things of this nature, you know, just understanding like the matchups against the different opponents is crucial in success for the Pokemon TCG scene. Um, you want to try to explore the strengths and weaknesses of the deck archetype versus the popular decks, right? So, anything that's meta. So, a little bit of guidance on that is. TM Devo for this deck is pretty crucial because you're not really swinging higher than 200. You're not really swinging higher than 200, right? Now, you can swing for the 200, and as long as you have multiple Meow Scardas down, Bokeh Magic could potentially knock out some bench Pokemon, right? You could, if you had like two Meow Scardas in play, you could potentially do 60 
damage to something, right? Like, if he put down a basic, he was sleeping on it, right? Something's just sitting on the bench and you really want to take care of it. You could, right? You could. It's possible. But you're going to be moving the energy around so much to take out, like, the, the Vs and the EXs with Radiant Alakazam that knocking out the bench isn't really the goal, but it's possible, right? It's possible. Um, other than that, Turo, you want to try to preserve the Meow Skardas as much as possible. So as they start to get hurt, lift them up, take them out of there, and then just put the Meow Skarda on a different Spriggy that you already have built up. Um, other than that, you really want to focus on the Earthen Vessels to get the, the Grass Energies out of the deck, put them into your hand. So you can put the damage counters on the Pokemon that you need to, and you can use Alakazam Meow Skarda to really start doing your damage. Uh, Lost Vacuum for sure is just like a standard for this type of deck. Uh, Counter Catcher, you're going to want to get the Energy Retrieval. Uh, you want the Energy Cards to come directly to your hand so you can keep using the Meow Skarda ability. A Maxim Belt, just to maybe swing a little harder if you needed to, but like I said, expect 200 swings for the most part. The Maxim Belt is just like assistance. And I, I don't even really count on it when I use this deck. Like I said, what I really am counting on is putting damage counters on all of the Charizards, do a well-timed TM Devo, and most likely you knocked out two Charizards right there. You know what I'm saying? Because it has too much damage on it. But for the most part, that is it. Um, some of the advanced tactics and tips um, that you would want to try with this one is you want to keep the one for two trade. You want to be careful versus Zard. Um, like I said, make sure you just... Make sure you always swap in the Meow Scarters out as they start to take a little bit too much damage. Then you Turo them out of there. And I would even go so far as when you want to time the TM Devos, you boss in the second Charizard ahead of time. Go ahead and get some damage on it. And then when you put the new Meow Scarter out there, that's when you do the TM Devo. They turn into Charmanders. They get knocked out, blah, blah, blah. And you disrupt the whole chain. Or you could even kill Pidgeot early if you really wanted to, right? If you wanted to take away their Pidgeot engine, stop them from doing all the drawing, basically that you would be doing the same thing anyway, you know what I'm saying? If you wanted to stop them from doing quick searches and getting uh, certain cards and tools that they need to accomplish more Charizards and get more energy back, because Charizard uh, doesn't really run a lot of energies, so... He'll most likely be trying to pull the energies back into the deck and then get them back out when he gets uh, another rare candy, another Charizard to the PGIT yet. So, other than that, pretty simple deck. Um, works. It works. It's not the best. It's not the best that I've encountered so far. It works. I like it. Um, I'm sure it'll be better when we start getting more and more grass Pokemon to kind of like back it up. And then maybe we can start taking out the Pidgey Eye engine. Maybe we don't need Bieber Roll. There'll be different draw engines that we can utilize and stuff like that. So right now, this is kind of where it's at. But I'm really looking forward to Twilight Masquerade um, and seeing like some of the new Pokemon and how they start to do a little bit of synergy with decks like this and regards to countering Charizards and things of that nature so we can really start to take that out of like the top one spot and all the um, tournaments and things of that nature but that's it guys make sure to like share and subscribe um, I'm going to be releasing uh, the rest of the Meow Skarda matches this week so make sure you look out for those I'm going to be releasing like at least a couple more guys because I've really been playing Thorns I've really been playing more into the electric uh, Pokemon real quick i've been trying to get those knocked out get them out of the way so be prepared for that it's coming out soon probably even tomorrow even i'm most likely going to drop it so uh other than that guys peace <laughs>